The Simon Filer Podcast, giving authors a platform. Welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Totally stoked to have the fabulous Greg Moriarty on my podcast today. Greg's written two books, The Swap, which he released on paperback in 2015, and his newest, the soon-to-be-released Scott Free. Can't wait for this. Welcome to my podcast, Greg. Thanks, Simon. Thanks very much. You're more than welcome. First of all, I wanted to, to ask you what made you decide on doing an audio book with this release and how did you find me? <laughs> so with my first book, there were a couple of people that said they didn't read it and they, they wouldn't read um, paperbacks. And they, <laughs> <laughs> right. and, they, uh, and I thought, okay, I'm going to get you, yeah, I'll get you to read the next one. I'm going to make sure I cover all my formats. So I thought, oh, let's try audio. And I, I know that audio is growing. Yeah, definitely. It's growing and growing. So I thought, ah, oh, what's a really good way for an independent author to have a broader reach? And I thought, all right, well, I'll go with a, uh, an audio book. And I think it's got, you know, it's the sort of story that might have a wide, a younger audience reach as well. So. Yeah, it's a great story. So, yes, and how did you find me? And I did, did a Google search, actually. Okay. And there, I know there aren't that many audiobook producers in the country and right. your name came up straight away awesome yeah and uh and i did a bit of uh, navigating around your site and awesome. people seem to be really happy with the whole process awesome and how um, about you now at this end of it yeah yeah it's great it was um it was a breeze totally uh what's the word ignorant of <laughs> what goes into it and i, I said to you before that i felt i was in really good hands oh thank you yeah, and really and you were really professional yeah. with my Many demands and inquiries. <laughs> oh, hardly. <laughs> you were very smooth and easy. So you wanted to have the book narrated. That's what you rang when we had a conversation. You were like, yeah, no, I'm definitely not going to voice this thing. I want a voice actor to do nah. it instead. Why did you decide I'm not going to do this thing? <laughs> I, I've i always gone with traditional books or maybe e-books. I've only listened to one audio book myself. Right. So I definitely have to. And I, I, considering the amount of walking and jogging I do, I should listen to more. But... When I did listen to them, I realised I didn't have the vocal range for it. I know. I think I sound really dull. <laughs> That's <laughs> Re not really nice. monotonous. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I don't have the. I want them to to show, you know, subtleties in the voice and just control the voice. I'm sure, you know, the narrator would say they're an actor with their voice, and, and yeah, I, and I would just come across as an amateur. I, <laughs> I reckon. No, I might do it for the next for the next one, but for this one, I thought, yeah, I and there's a range of characters. Yeah, and I thought it needs a bit somebody with a bit more experience and a bit more control of their voice. Yeah, yeah. Thank right. you for that. But no, that was a uh, that was a firm no. For yeah, me. it was a firm no. I was like, okay. <laughs> so I did send you a few, and you were like, oh, I don't really know if I want anyone there. And then you said that one audio book you listened to was Steve Shanahan. Mm. I was like, well, hang on a second, let's see if we can find him. Mm. So yeah, how do you how do you think he turned out? Oh yeah, yeah, really, really, really well. Yeah, it, I was really surprised when you came back. <laughs> the name, so I, I sent you that just to say someone like him a voice like his um and then when you emailed me back and said um steve's on board it was like whoa um so yeah that was fantastic yeah but uh yeah i, th I think he did an incredible job and I really when i heard his um his narration for jane harper's books i just thought he had the right amount of like gravelly mm. bit of tension and I needed them um, to to bring audiences uh, or readers along with a particular line, so I thought it has to be a male character, yeah, uh, male voice, excuse me. And yeah, his voice was the right amount of tension, a bit of apprehension, a bit of urgency in his voice. He's yeah. got this real sort of almost like panic around it, um, but he's soft when he he needs to be, and he did a re really good job swinging between male and female voices and range you know fear anger uh just standard speech it was great yeah i was really mm. thrilled when i was listening to it it's like i had to remind myself hey you're editing this don't you know like, you're actually <laughs> doing a job here it was great well written obviously firstly Thank and you. he did a great job narrating it okay we will chat a little bit more about the fabulous plot of scott free shortly but i want to hear a bit more about you so how long have you been in Australia? Because obviously you don't have mm. uh, a broad Aussie accent. <laughs> no. So I came here when I was 15. I'm 52 now. I came here when I was 15. Right. Uh, in the mid-80s in 1985 from London. Right. I've got Irish parents. We, of the five kids, four of us grew up in London. And yeah, grew up in the western suburbs of Sydney. Okay. Yeah. So I've been here for years and I lived outside. I went back to the UK for a few years. Right. So that's years. maybe where your accent yeah. came back. Yeah. 
Did you find that you lost your accent at all? Because 15 is quite young -ish. Young, I know. It's, yeah. it's been a bit... You're just hanging yeah, on to London. Just, yeah, <laughs> held on to it. And then I was in Spain for seven years. So I did spend 10, 11 years outside of Australia. Right. But I've, yeah, I seem to have always held on to this accent. Yeah. I was traveling for... It's a very cool thing. Thank you. Thank you. I was traveling <laughs> I love for the work. London accent. <laughs> I was traveling for work and I was in Ireland for a conference. And... Someone said to me, oh, I love your Australian accent. That was a few years ago. What? I was like, wow, I've waited decades for someone to tell me I've got an Australian accent. Where were they from? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> from Ireland, obviously, felt, heard a bit of a twang and thought, oh, that's Australian. <laughs> that is hilarious. I can't hear you know an Australian accent. <laughs> you can't. <can't. laughs> no, I'm sorry. Fantastic. Um, so what, speaking of your job, then, if you're travelling around, what do you do? So this was before COVID, we used to have, you know, conferences and, and travel into state, but I train writing skills. So I do plain English writing workshops. So we train professionals, lawyers. I've got a law degree and uh, okay. background in well, legal uh, studies. And so, yeah, train lawyers how to write in plain language, how to um, structure larger pieces of text as they try to persuade the usually non-legal readers yeah. who are time poor. So we work with government, yeah, a lot of government, private sector, banks, how to write comms to say, you know, around complaints and okay. you know, how to structure information. How did you get into that? So I came back from Spain having taught English as a second language there a little while back in Sydney and I saw a job here that was for a plain language trainer. So it's English language, but it's a bit broader. So it's got some writing skills around sentences and words and active passive language. And then it looks at structure and design, use of headings, bold and italics, all those sorts of things. Yeah. There's a lot of research out there. We put that together and here's the sort of set of principles for uh, clear communication for some of the documents that we help people um, produce or templates that we write, uh, how to update ministers as quickly as possible so they spend as little time as possible reading the details and they get the key messages and they're willing to sign off on something. Really interesting. So I'm a content manager, came up on the training side of things, uh, uh, produce, put together the manuals that they use. Mm, do you enjoy uh, it? Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I've been in there for uh, in it for about thirteen years. We used to do a lot of travel with the state. Yeah. Um, before. <laughs> yeah, before it all it, happened. Yeah, switched to virtual, um, and now face to face workshops are coming back, and um, perhaps international conferences. But yeah, so that's that's nice. Do you want to get back into that traveling? Yeah, that would be yeah. great. Yeah, I um I do want to go back to Spain. I love Spain, not to live just to. Uh, holiday there um so yeah there's uh, there's a big plain language movement in the states and canada so right. i've been there for conferences and we've been to wellington and uh, and there was one in sydney before yeah way before my time 2009 what but a yeah, cool job right. getting yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's really so i get to practice sort of writing skills yeah. every day and then um you know turn it to sort of crime fiction writing um by night by night yeah and by the weekend and sometimes i think oh my writing is so it reads like a fact sheet except it doesn't have dot points <laughs> what? Yeah, I, did. I didn't find that. <laughs> no, I'm not cutting that. <laughs> it is not like a fact sheet, I can tell you. It's going to have you hanging in there right to the end, this one. So it was seven years ago since the swap was published. Yeah. How did you like first write that? How did that come about? We'll talk briefly about that. Sure. So somebody, I'd always wanted to write crime fiction. That's all I ever read. I'm really not interested in, I do struggle to pick up other types. People say, read this biography or. Well, how did you get, let's novel. ask that first. How did you get into crime? What was the hook there? Uh, Agatha Christie, really? Yeah. yeah. Just, uh, well, actually, I, I never used to be books like Secret Seven. Oh, Media wow. Alfred Hitchcock and the Three Investigators. Yeah. There was a series of books. Yeah. Secret Seven. That's just like a blast yeah. from the past. Yeah, yeah. yeah, very cool. So that's all I ever used to read. And then um, growing up, I thought oh, I could write a you know, mystery. And then I got hold of a book called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. And it's amazing for unleashing or unlocking creativity. And she does. she has a writing program. She gets you to do certain activities and you meant to do um, sort of journal and notes every morning. And about three weeks into starting that, the idea for the first novel came to me. And then I just fleshed it out and then, yeah, and I self-published it on Amazon and as a just an e-book. And, and did you have an editor to go over it? I mean, doing no, the job you do, you would, wouldn't think you'd need an editor, yeah, really. No, I know, so I... Although, you know, you should really always think about an editor. I know, I know, I should. And I didn't. I did. It was a case of um, 
a man, man who thinks he doesn't need anyone else. <laughs> I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, uh, yeah, no, it was just me. I, I reviewed it sort of, I went through it nine times and I look back in it now and it's, it does need, you know, a, a, yeah, I should have uh, spent more time. But you learn, you know, with each, each novel that you do, I guess you get better as you go, you know, it's practice makes yeah. perfect. And I definitely took a different approach with this one. I've, I've had a couple of editors, proofreaders, uh, structure edit. I had the coaching through Tony Jordan. So I've had a lot, yeah, fair few pairs of eyes uh, looking over it and giving me feedback. Yeah, that's a good thing. You can tell it's very, well, I haven't actually read the swap, so I can't compare them. So but it'd be good to hear that though. So the process with Scott Free um, compared to the swap with publishing it, did you, you self-publish this one? Yeah, self-published it. I s tried to send it to people. And I sorry, I sent it to a couple of editors, and um, and I'm a member of the Australian Society of Authors, and they do a they do a literary speed dating event where you go onto a Zoom meeting, they give you a three minute slot, and a, a publisher or um, an agent sits in the room, mm. and you pitch the novel to them, and you've got three minutes. And so I pitched it. People said, "Yep, yeah, send me." I, I was really successful with the pitches. People yeah. said, "Send me it, send me it, send me it." Less successful with the uh, with the interest in it. Someone did actually, he said, okay, send me the first few chapters. And then he, he asked to see the, based on those first few chapters, he asked to see the entire manuscript. Nice. And he said, that's not really the direction that crime, Australian crime fiction is going at the moment. Right. Um, and so uh, uh, he was interested in looking at it if I made some changes. Okay. But but you were like, nah. <laughs> yeah, I've worked on it for seven years. <laughs> yeah, and, right. Uh, it's, at the end of the day, it's just a novel. And so, you know, I've got, uh, there's the next one that I've got to get onto. I can't rewrite it anymore. I'd pass through it so many. I'd had editors passing through it as well. So I was happy with where it was at. That's the story I wanted to tell. And then uh, I always thought, oh, look, I mean, it's great to get, it would be great to get a publishing deal um, and have the exposure. But really the main thing is that I enjoy writing and I do enjoy, if, you know, in 50 or 100 or a couple of hundred people tell me what they think of it or enjoy it. And so, the whole independent publishing market is just, you know, why would I turn my way, you know, turn away from that, spend the next decade trying to get a publisher to take this That's book right. up when, you know, at the end of the day, it's just another piece yeah. of fiction yeah. that people will enjoy and then, you know, cast aside and move on to the next one. Um, you know, I'm never going to see it on a, a, a school, re you know, school reading list <laughs> for exams. No, That's probably not. not. It's, <laughs> That's, not what, yeah. That's not what it's about. So. <laughs> well, who knows where yeah, the yeah. future might take <laughs> us, so, you know, having said that. Oh, well, that's pretty cool, all of that, you know. So the process, you just said it took seven years. So, I mean, I, you know, I wouldn't know how long it took. Well, I've never written a book. So, but firstly, the character development, because I found all of those characters so real and alive and picturable, if you like. How did you get those characters to be so alive? Right. That's thanks for that. That's that's a lovely thing to say because that I would say was down to Tony Jordan mentoring me. I did a draft, rough draft, and that was when I, I won a place on the mentor program that she was a part of. And she was talking to me about how do you make these ten characters stand out? They've got to be really distinct. Line them up. What's different about them? And so we worked on the on the character development um, about giving them secrets and making them distinct and not so cliche. It took a while. I made a lot of um, uh, plans and descriptions of these characters yeah. that never make their way into the book, but it's just to help you in your mind have that character uh, alive and clear and hopefully it comes out on the page. Yeah, well, it certainly did. I can tell you. I Thank thought, you. yeah, they're all really awesome characters. I did say alive, but some not for long, really, <laughs> in the book. So what was the initial spark that brought Scott Free the novel? Okay, so that, that has been in my head since about 2004. And there have been a load of shows, a load of books around murder shows. And so this is just another, you know, another, another book about a show where people murder each other. The sort, sort of endorsed show. And so, yeah, in about 2004... Big Brother was big. I was living in Spain and I had seen a few years before that. I had seen a film called Series 7, The Contenders, but it, it's a murder show and they're just running a mock outside. And I thought the idea of bringing that with the Big Brother set in a really confined space, that old, um, you know, the Agatha Christie locked room, a confined space, not an endless list of characters. And so, yeah, I thought of 
this idea of sort of 10 people thrust together, the, the convicted killers and then a relative of each family with closed courts so they don't know who's who and then there's a, sen a case of finding out who, who did what. Yeah, who. when I first read um, the synopsis, I'm like, what? It's like Big Brother. So basically, I'm just going to reiterate what you said. Five convicted killers in a house with the relatives of the person they've murdered. <laughs> I was like, that's dark. <laughs> <laughs> Very. Yeah, obviously that comes from a crime mind. <laughs> so I was going to say give us a brief overview of the story without ruining the end, but probably that's pretty much a brief overview. There's, so it's a TV show. It's been running for a few seasons. Yep. They want something new. And into that household goes Jay, who's recently lost his sister in tragic circumstances. And it takes a group of, yeah, those 10 people, puts them together, and you just see the, the series unfolding and being manipulated by the producers of yeah. the show for ratings. And everyone has their secrets. And there are relationships that develop within the house and some fall apart and then pretty soon the numbers start to dwindle <laughs> yeah <laughs> in the first book there was just one murder and i thought oh, i need to bump up the, the <laughs> i got the taste for one. that <laughs> <laughs> so i thought right we're gonna do a few more there could definitely be more books That's along right. the same line I, right, yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. waiting for the next yeah. one yeah. <laughs> very good like ongoing season like big brother you know yeah, in yeah, fact exactly. All right, I reckon personally, I think it would be number one on Netflix if it was released as a movie or a mini series. You know, is that something that you'd look into? Oh, yeah, I'd love to. That's my, that would be my dream to, to be sitting there chomping on popcorn watching, you know, dramatization of the book would be, yeah, an absolute dream. Yeah. Mm. Well, hopefully we can get someone to, you know, get on board and do the pilot. So yeah, that'd be great. anybody that loves a story and knows anybody in that industry, hit us yeah, up. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Yeah, I could definitely see that mm. because it's so visual in, in your mind when you read it yeah. or when you listen to it because yeah. obviously we've done it in audio now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, I think you mentioned briefly before, you've got some more stories brewing there in your mind. <laughs> yeah. So this one is it's the, the draft is done. First draft is done and it's about a woman who plans a murder with a guy. Okay. So they do agree to swap murders. Oh, so it's it's that's an idea that um, was done with strangers on the train and um, which H Hitchcock turned into a film. But yeah, the idea of people swapping murders and then trying to avoid detection. Okay, that. how do these ideas do they just pop into your head? Sometimes, yeah, and it's still with that the tip from Julia Cameron in her book The Artist's Way, which is I journal each morning. So I get up really early uh, and I just do stream of consciousness writing every morning and these odd ideas come up and I see if it's going to go somewhere and sometimes yeah. it doesn't and sometimes it does and then I might develop an idea and send it to, you know, send chapters to this writing group and they give me, you know, they tell me rein it in, you're talking rubbish. <laughs> oh, this sounds good. Yeah. Do you find some other authors have said to me that when they're writing, they kind of feel like they're in flow and it's not really even them writing, you know, it's coming from somewhere. Yeah, I love that. I love that sense of just, yeah, the seeing what, seeing what the characters are going to do next. And I'm almost in a trance when I'm picturing this and visualising it. It's That's just, cool. you know, I'm, I'm aware and I'm alert, but just being lost in the moment and really, really running away with these, I guess I'm living in my head. Yeah, that, that's. I think that is so awesome. You know, I take my hat off to writers that can do that. It's just getting in that zone and mm -hmm. letting that flow. It's amazing. Yeah. Did you always want to be a writer? Yeah, I've always wanted to. I always said I was going to write mysteries when I grew up. And I just love the idea of pulling the wool over people's eyes. So I'm not interested in, you know, thank you for what you said about the characters. I'm not really interested in necessarily uh, memorable characters like, a, like a Hannibal Lecter. But I just want to really drag people along through the, bring them along through this plot mm. um, and have them turn in the pages. And I like the, you know, for this one, I went with really short chapters and I think it lends itself really well to the, an audio book. You know, um, people listening in short doses, yeah. can, you know, step away when they want to. Yeah, like 10 minute, 20 minute mm, segments. Mm, mm. Yeah, definitely. Have you got any advice for any writers that are listening today that have kind of written something and they'd like to actually become an author? My advice would be persist. 
find a writers group and share ideas and see how other people develop chapters my general advice would be to find out if you're a a person who just likes to enjoy they they write i'm not i'm a plotter i love preparing so i've got excel spreadsheets of each of the chapters i have to plan it all out all right and start once the idea comes and other people say no i'm i just write and i like to see where the characters are going to lead me um but i generally have to know where i'm heading for each chapter or subsection knowing that realizing that, that was a particular type of way to work i i, I think the earlier somebody works out if they're a, a planner or a you know a spontaneous drafter would uh, help them but any, anything works really and people say get into a routine um just know that it's a million steps it's a million <laughs> small steps all? yeah <laughs> um, but done one by one you know you just have to just have to self-motivate or mo you know find motivation somehow when do you ride are you riding because you obviously you've got a day job so yeah evenings weekends and if it is just you know an hour or two at the end of the day that's why it's so important to break it down and chunk it so i think right i'm not done have to work through the whole chapter i just have to tidy this particular section of the chapter yeah and it's just layer upon layer and um i think the worst thing that i did was compare the first draft to you know like a, a published novel and it's not there yet it's the published novel had to go through several drafts review 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 is that the hard part do you think the, the reviewing the reviewing yeah yeah that's the well that's the bulk of the work really the first draft is nothing you know it was never meant to be looked at by anyone else it's it's just getting that idea on the page and then working with that and getting to the next point and then reviewing that next draft and using that to get to the next point yeah okay so well what about the the guys that have already had something edited and looked at and what do you reckon they should do then it really is a matter of getting it to the best product you know the best point that you can yeah. and then deciding if you're going to go down the self-publishing independent publishing route or sending it off to agents and publishers mm. i'm too impatient to i i thought I, <laughs> I was too impatient to think i can't wait for all these people to take months to write back to me yeah you know, i just thought i wanted it yeah. wanted it out straight away and so i had you know i'd sent this out a year or so ago and then i did a major revision of it um and that's when i started to uh, send it to other publishers and then I thought, right now, after this, I'm just going to, um, I've got family, family and friends that are waiting to read it. I, um, I thought, right, I'm going to release it. And then I, um, finalized that, get the audio book done and it's all come together really, really nicely. Yeah. The time you... has been fantastic. Awesome. And so how far away can, is it that before we can see it and hear it? So it's launching, releasing on the 15th of September okay yeah, that's and, coming up quick yeah yeah and uh better get that upload happening <laughs> yeah yeah so around around then and um and then yeah it'll be available online and in bookshops from roughly mid-september yeah so i can't wait yeah, yeah. I've, i'm running a couple of giveaways excellent There's a giveaway on goodreads i'm doing a giveaway on my, through my website so what is your website how can people find you yeah www.gregmoriarty.com and funnily enough there's a politician called greg moriarty Oh right! Yeah, he's uh, sort of um, uh, sort of consular and ambassador. Okay. And Google is currently attributing my books to him. Oh, <laughs> but, is that right? Yeah. Is that can't be? You like it? Is he fairly famous? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that can't be too bad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're happy to ride of, on yeah, that. Yeah, forget a couple of mistake here. Sales. That's cool with me. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> a good thing because it's not really a you know a very common name greg moriarty no, no. so that's cool how did yeah. you find that out just uh, going just, and yeah, googling yeah, yourself yeah, just googling it with them um, the the editor who's helping me with the meet, uh, publicity pieces yeah we noticed that his name comes up okay yeah, interesting i'm gonna have to check that out after i have a chat with you well I'm, i can say that i thoroughly enjoyed the the story i thought the characters were really real and it was yeah compulsive listening basically i was just saying i've got three kids i was saying to them i'm editing and they're like you know it's like eight o'clock at night <laughs> you know, well, i'm really actually reading this book <laughs> <laughs> it was that good so i just couldn't wait to get to the end yeah i, I really hope that people enjoy the twists in it i yeah. do like to yeah to pull, pe pull the wool over people's eyes as i said and hopefully there's uh that they can't put it down and they you know they keep reading beyond the 
usual bedtime because of the story. That's the that's the um, that's one of the, the nicest compliments. Yeah. With the first book, having people uh, you know write reviews and they just enjoyed it, you know, might, way more than I ever thought someone would that's enjoy That's excellent. It. So you'll have get... to yeah, you'll have to get a Google page up for Scott Free. I'm sure you'll get some yeah, good yeah. reviews. Yeah. So anyone that's into crime or horror, even. Can yeah, imagine yeah. I could just see it on yeah. Netflix because you can visualise that stuff mm. that you've written in there. Yeah, Scott Free, combination between Big Brother and possibly The Hunger Games, in a room, five convicted killers and relatives of those dead people mm. that they murdered. Mm. Coming to a store near you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today and for engaging me to do your book. I've really enjoyed it and I've no doubt it's going to be really successful because it's a great story. Great. Thanks, Simone. Thanks, someone. I was in really good hands. So thank you so much for your, well, for your work and bringing it to life. Thank you. Thanks for joining the Simon Filer podcast. What's your story? Contact Simon for a chat at BrisbaneAudioBookProduction.com. dot